Hey you guys, welcome back to another episode of Black Male Accountability. So today's episode, we're going to be speaking about the broken hypergamy and patriarchy within the black community. So first off, I want to start with the definitions of both of those words. Patriarchy is a system of society or government in which the father or eldest male is the head of the family and descent is traced through the male line. And hypergamy is the action of marrying a person of superior caste or class, a.k.a. marrying up. Most, if not all, women of other races indirectly and directly practice both systems. You can literally YouTube search both words and you will find channels of all races, white, Latina, black, all of that, talking about both of those systems. And whether they're against it for it all of that stuff but they will give you the facts of it so this is not a word that people just made up all of a sudden 2020 or 2019 no no these systems have been around for hundreds thousands of years and uh, if you want true patriarchy in submission then hypergamy is necessary before we even get to hypergamy, though, let's talk about this because a lot of y'all, y'all like to, you know, go back and forth with black women online and you like to say, oh, well, that's why I went and got me a white bitch. She's submissive. I don't have to do nothing for her, which is very indicative of how you view yourself as a man. But let me tell you why you don't have to do anything for your white bitch or your Latina chick. Psst. 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 It's because their men have already done it for them. So when they already have that system in place, they already have that validation that no matter what their community has them because they're still community minded. Granted, there will be some in their community, you know, God forbid her and Tyrone broke up or whatever. There are some that will shun her because she went outside of her race. But collectively, that that community is not going nowhere. That that white woman or non-black woman that you're with has stability that she'll be good regardless. At any rate. Gender roles aside and race aside, the breadwinner, when it comes down to it, is always going to be the shot caller. I can even use myself for an example with this. Now, as far as um, like gold digging or, you know, sugar baby dynamics with sugar daddies and sugar mamas, uh, y'all, y'all hear my music. Y'all know what I rap about. <laughs> so um, when... I am on these, you know, hmm. let's call them money dates. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, money dates. <laughs> that lady is the boss. She got the check. I want the check. So I may do some stuff that's not in my natural element in order to get them bills paid. You know what I'm saying? So she's going to be that boss in that dynamic. Now, that's not a patriarchal dynamic, but at the end of the day, as I said, the breadwinner is going to be the one in control. And that's just on it is what it is. I didn't make the rules. I'm just here to tell you how it is. Now, I have seen this dynamic flips before. It was a white couple, and um, they were neighbors of mine. It was a man and a woman. She was deployed. I am army, military, one or the other. I don't know. I don't pretend to know all the ranks because that's not an area of expertise for me. But at any rate, she was serving, and he was the housewife. He didn't have no job. He was the housewife. So he cooked, cleaned, did all that stuff, and um, took care of the kids and all that. Fast forward, and they did that for, I think, like 10 years, I think. Fast forward to the last, well, the last time, you know, I was talking with my neighbor about this, another neighbor of mine. And uh, she has her a hot, fine thing now. He's like 29 or something like that. And she's taking him to the zoo with the kids, all this other stuff. It's a, it's a lot of stuff. <laughs> it, was, it was messy as fuck. But nonetheless, she's off on that. And he's off getting, um, trying to find work. He hasn't worked in 10 years. So he's having trouble finding work, all this other stuff. And then there's a whole bunch of other stuff. The, that stuff is really irrelevant. But she stepped out on him because why? She didn't respect him. <laughs> She didn't respect him. Now, there was some other stuff going on. There's some mental issues there. We're not going to get into all of that. But um, I also don't want to play this off like a gender-specific thing because it's not that. We've seen the same thing happen with Kelvin Hunter and Wendy Williams. You know what I'm saying? He couldn't provide for her, so 
what better way to repair his, you know, fragile male ego than to start pumping and dumping on something young. And apparently his ego wasn't, you know, appeased by that because as Remy Ma said, got side chick pussy with wife privileges. They over here purchasing properties together and shit. Then, you know, you have um, Jill Scott and her husband who are now divorced. And I think she's paying him spousal support. And then you have Mary J. Blige and Ken Do. Ken Do, whatever. Can't Do. That's what his name is, damn it. <laughs> so this situation of, you know what I'm saying? I understand as far as like, you know, the quote unquote traditional things that we used to pick on men for doing that are traditionally female, like cooking and stuff like that. As far as that is concerned, like I went to a culinary arts school. I don't view cooking as a feminine or a masculine thing. And to you men who disagree, well, I know y'all sitting there hungry during this quarantine because you wanted a bad bitch and she don't know how to cook, clean the dish, wash clothes, or do any of that shit. I know y'all are hungry. <laughs> but, you know, let me, let me relax. <laughs> But no, um, as I was saying, you know, if you want women to submit to you, black men, black women, if you want black women to submit to you, you have to give them something to submit to. Um, and that's just the rules. It is what it is. Men date based on looks and well, based on looks primarily and women date on what men can provide for them. That's that's what society is. <laughs> And trust and believe, just because women are not loud and vocal with this, that doesn't mean it doesn't go on. A lot of women, probably even some of the ones who attacked her, agree with what B. Simone said. Now, I don't believe in her vocalizing that because black women get scrutinized for everything. But you better believe Annalise Keating wasn't going to be fucking on some fry cook from McDonald's. That's not, that's not realistic, people. That's not realistic. That's not how that works. <laughs> There is a food chain in life. Now, you do have some people who are, you know, more selfless than others, and they'll step off of their, you know, pedestal as far as society considers them, whether it be work or, you know, whatever type of caste system, and they'll date somebody who is, quote, unquote, under them. But overall, most people want somebody who is evenly yoked. So now that we've got that out the way, let me discuss some reasons why black women are not able to fully achieve these two options solely with black men. So my first bulletin point is we, and this is just a harsh truth, we are behind in the race as far as other men of other races are concerned. And also, black men generally take longer to become established. You know, you can equate that to a couple of factors. You know, maybe he's just in, you know, get the bag mode, got to get the bag, hustle, hustle, hustle. And, you know, then he's trying to get married in his late 30s. And it's like, okay, if you want a black woman, her ovaries are already pushing it as far as, you know, pregnancy if she wants a kid. You know what I'm saying? It could be that. You could also base it on the unfair pay discrimination that goes on within the workplace. Many of factors. Next up would be, we also do not practice marriage enough as a whole within our race. And even with other races, like I've noticed, um, as far as, you know, okay, y'all end up, you know, slipping up and having a baby. I don't judge over here as far as that's concerned. Um, sex is a natural thing. Humans have sex. But let's say, you know, the condom rips, whatever the hell happens, y'all was drunk or whatever. Even when other races of men knock up, they will swoop in to lock up. <laughs> like, literally, they are quick to lock up after the knock up. They're not going to be bringing a child into this world out of wedlock. Even if they got to remix the story a little bit to their family members, whatever the situation is, they're going to wife that lady up before she puts that baby out her belly. Now, in an ideal world... We are all keeping our hands to ourselves until we are exclusively dating this person. But that doesn't happen like that. And I'm not also saying, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that I want people to just get married just because they're about to have a child. But I'm just pointing out the fact that other races of men, they don't play that shit. They are quick to lock up after the knock up. Keywords. So next bulletin point would be the number of beta men versus alpha men in our community are overly disproportionate. Like you literally have black men telling, li literally telling women, black women online, they will not fight for them. And that instead they will rather go to another community that's already established. And we spoke about that earlier when I had, you know, brought up the fact that a lot of black men like to say a lot of these women are quicker to submit to them than black women, which I mean, 
may or may not be true. I know with some white women, they're really just fetishizing y'all. Like it's real. If if you took away the BBC porn, they wouldn't want your ass. Um, a lot of y'all are being fetishized, and I see it with black women as well on the IR dating side. I don't see it as much, nearly as much. Like black or white men were not at protest saying we love black titties, so you know we we care about black lives. That was black men and black wi- uh, white women doing that. So you know, but nonetheless. Another bulletin point I have is the number of successful black men are not up to par with the number of successful black women. And um, as far as that, we could go into the incarceration rates for black men are ridiculously high. Also, the number of black men with kids out of wedlock are also relatively high. And hypergamous women in general don't want to deal with children that they didn't pop out themselves unless they are pursuing older men in which the choice varies. They may want kids, they may not. And I understand as far as the incarceration rate, I know we are operating in a system of white supremacy. So I don't need you to tell me the reason why the incarceration rates are high. We already know that stuff. We're moving on to how do we progress through this system of white supremacy? Because we're going to have to deal with it until we take it out. So nonetheless, um, also black women are graduating at higher rates than even white men, which puts them at a higher pay rate than their counterparts without degrees. And I can tell y'all personally, having a degree, uh, uh, (laughs) uh, it helps you get paid higher. I I know this for a fact. I'm talking about, like, I made more coming on than certain managers I had. And now I'm speaking in terms of when they signed on, what they started out with. But still, you know what I'm saying? That degree will help you as long as you know how to use it right and make sure that to announce that you have it when you're applying for the job. So with that being said, some of us are more comfortable with clocking in or playing it safe versus starting our own trades or jobs. Now, again, ain't nothing wrong with clocking in. If that's what you do, that's what you do. But I'm saying as a community minded man, we need to be building and you will be at a much better advantage Like even I said, starting our own trade. If you have your own trade and a nine to five, you know what I'm saying? Um, I feel like as an American, it's not enough to just have a nine to five period. That's unless you are the lawyer or the doctor. Most people aren't speaking of those when they say nine to five. B. Simone wasn't thinking about no lawyer or no doctor when she said she don't want no nine to five nigga. She's thinking about the nigga at McDonald's flipping patties. And ain't no shame in that. We was all there. My first job was Arby's. And even if you wasn't there, you still order food from these same places. So don't get that twisted. But um, with that being said, I feel like even with, you know, the starting a trade, you know, you can start this on your kids when they're younger, like 13, 14. You know what I'm saying? Have them go out if you're men or if they women, shit, if they want to have them cut out and uh, or, you know, girls and boys. Have them go out and cut grass. You know what I'm saying? Hi, my name is da-da-da-da. Can I cut your grass? Da-da-da-da. That's some under-the-table money there. They don't have to worry about the taxes. They have them some extra money saved up already. Have them put some in their savings. You know, just little things that we can do to, you know, implement that hustler mindset in a healthy way. Because what I don't want our kids of the future to be thinking hustle is, is sleeping three hours every day. Because it's all the time you got. You know what I'm saying? Even if you got a good paying job. We still want a healthy balance. And that's something that right now I, at 22, am trying to figure out. For those who don't know, I do Uber, Grubhub. Um, I was doing that all of 2019 up until November. And then I had an Uber to my job that or the place that ended up being my job. And then um, I also do my podcast. Um, I do my merch, Fuego. Um, I've been doing music since 2018. I'm always writing, um, working on albums, mixtapes. So I, the balance is, you know what I'm saying, is challenging to find. But I'm glad that I don't have my eggs all in one basket. Another bulletin point that I have is the whole independent black woman trope and how that has plagued our women into having to be the man and the woman. You know what I'm saying? I'm a strong black woman. We've all heard that shit. Now, what I don't like about this conversation is black men will be willfully ignorant and acting like it's our only only the women that portray this shit. Um, sir, I N D E P E N D E N T. Do you? She got her own house. She got her own car. 
Miss Independent. That's, look, don't talk about my singing, because I don't want to have to come for y'all. Now, so don't come for me. But you get the gist of what I'm saying. So those are two well-known songs, very popular in the black community, that were black men performing them. I don't care if they wrote them or not. That's irrelevant. They did their part in perpetuating that same stereotype. And they didn't have to say independent black woman. We knew who the fuck they was. Let's be real. Let's be real. So again, let me reiterate. The breadwinner is ultimately the shot cola at the end of the day. Regardless of the roles, a balance is necessary. I told y'all about me and my <clears throat> money dates. <laughs> I'm a man. However, in those situations, the woman got the money. I'm going to do what I need to do to get that bag. So as long as there is a balance within the situations, it works out. But you cannot be pulling in 60 grand a year. Meanwhile, your woman is pulling in 80 grand a year and you think you're going to be the boss of the relationship. You're not going to. That's not a reality. Y'all both going to work. She coming home on top of the fact that she make more than you. She cooking for your ass, cleaning for your ass, doing your laundry. And then you expect her to come in the room and fuck you with a smile on her face and ask you what money should be delegated to what bills when she make the most. That's not how it works, fellas. I'm sorry. (laughs) That's not how it works. (laughs) So with that being said, that pretty much wraps up this episode. I will catch y'all on the next episode of BMA. Peace out.